Guess what it's time for? Guess what it's time for? Born of that TV Q&A. 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 <laughs> Born of that TV Q&A. 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 Hey everyone, welcome to another installment of Born of that TV Q&A. Hope you enjoyed that new intro. Camera's a little crooked here. Let me fix and adjust the camera. Anywho. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna go through my YouTube inbox and try to answer some of the questions here. Let me kill some of the background noise. Um, and I'm gonna answer some of the questions here. I got a lot of messages. I'm gonna go through as many as I can. Apologize if I haven't gotten to yours. First one is from 420 Jazzy420. It says, I hey, I saw some of your videos about the iPhone. I just got mine and have realized how uncomputer savvy I actually am. Anyway, I don't have any friends with an iPhone, so I was wondering what is jailbreaking on the iPhone and are there any downfalls to it? I appreciate the help. This is a very common question. In fact, I'm thinking about doing a dedicated video for it. But to briefly answer your question, jailbreaking is when, what is jailbreaking? It is when you are hacking your iPhone in order to put unauthorized third-party software on it. Now, you probably know that Apple has their own application store in the App Store, and uh, those are the applications that Apple approves. Well, prior to that store, and even now, a lot of independent developers and people who want to do things their own way have created their own development platform and their own system. So, this system is where you see a lot of these apps that Apple doesn't approve like quick, and I talked about Sidecore last time. And there's a program called Cydia, which installs all of these programs. So that is what jailbreaking is. It's an unauthorized way of getting software onto your iPhone or iPod Touch. Are there any downfalls to it? Well, anytime you hack your iPhone or you put anything that's unauthorized on it, there is a chance that something can go wrong. That's just the reality of it. So it isn't 100% safe. Nothing is 100% safe when it comes to hacking. Although there is a high success rate with jailbreaking iPhones, that doesn't necessarily mean it's, it's completely safe. Um, now that I've jailbroken my iPhone 3G, the first thing that I notice, and you probably will notice too, is that it takes longer for the device to start up and shut down. Uh, there's a lot more going on in the background than before. Um, also, your device, depending on what software you install, but you know, I have the minimum on mine, it will be slower. Your device will operate slower, you'll notice some lag, you'll tap on an icon, and there's a tiny bit of a, a, when I say lag, I'm talking about a delay between you tapping and it actually registering what you tap. That's one of the downfalls. That's, I think that's one of the biggest ones, and that's, I think that's what I tell people when they jailbreak their iPhone. Hey, you know, there's a risk involved initially, but, you know, once you get it there, it's going to be slower. The device is going to be slower, but some people prefer that trade-off of a little bit of a slower device to have a lot of these cool programs that Apple hasn't authorized to go through the App Store. So I hope I answered your question. Uh, the next one, I haven't screened these, I'm just going down the list. I was wondering if you can walk me through an easy way to jailbreak an iPhone 3G. If you can, let me know. This is from Tin Money. Uh, I did a video, um, I forgot the name, the title of it, but I walked through the process of actually jailbreaking and um, and unlocking an iPhone using uh, Win not Winpone but Ponage tool for the Macintosh and and Winpone is a similar process. So look through my YouTube channel, you'll see a video that says jailbreaking or unlocking your iPhone with the Ponage tool. You can just search for Ponage tool and you'll find a detailed. It's like 30 minutes, 30, 45 minute long video on how to do it using that tool. So check that out. Next one is from Ja Mackin. Um, okay. LOL, you slept on my comment. All right. So, how's the things up north? Just showing some love from the MIA. Anyway, let me get down to the questions. T Mobile G1 versus iPhone 3G. Give me your views while I'm on the iPhone. I have a 3G. Sleep with it every night. 
Uh, but anyone who was reading an article the other day about Adobe getting the green light from Apple to produce a long the flash prayer player, but on the other side of the coin, Apple's the one who's that's going to decide on the release date. Anywho, what I think might happen is that they're going to be waiting on competition as far as specs and stability on the iPhone. What do you think? Of course, anyone else wants to get their thoughts. Much love from Miami, man. It's hot down here. Cool. All right. Um, first thing, T-Mobile G1, and the uh, this is. This is the new phone that was offered by T-Mobile, which is running the Google Android platform. If you haven't heard about it, uh, you can look up just T-Mobile G1. You'll find a bunch of stuff about it. T-Mobile G1 versus Apple's iPhone 3G. Well, that's, that's an interesting question because the Android platform is very new. And uh, a lot of people outside of reviewers and people who decided to purchase the unit um, day one don't really know other than walkthroughs on the internet and YouTube videos what it can do now we, we see on paper you know that it's very powerful with Google applications um, they're planning to open up the software to third-party developers and open source the platform um, they're also talking about doing things like uh, tighter integration with Google Maps there's some cool features there um, also, they're going to have their own application store. So, a, a lot of the benefits you see on the iPhone are going to be on the T Mobile G1. But for me, it's going to come down to user experience. And this is my, my opinion. If I were to hold or review a T Mobile G1, the first thing I would look for is the overall user experience. Is it easy to use? Are things easy to type is the form factor of the phone itself easy to hold and manage and to do things with is it intuitive do I need to read the book on anything um, do I need to crack open the manual to find out how to configure my email account do I have to do things a certain way in order to get things done are there any limitations you know a lot of questions will come to mind so while I haven't played with the T-Mobile G1 um, uh, by myself you know uh, in my own hands, um, those were the things I'd be looking for. So right off the cuff, I would say just by judging, which is not something I rarely do, but just by judging by what's on paper and by the reviews, I think Apple may have the edge on user experience while the G1 may have the upper hand on openness and you know willingness to embrace the third-party development community. Now, Apple's doing some cool stuff with the App Store, but that's a little bit of a a little bit of a um, shaky area and Apple's got some bad reputation going on so that's my opinion on that now the second part of that question um, about flash uh, that's a touchy subject as well I did a video about Apple and their dealings with flash earlier but you know it, it, it comes down to technology um, while Adobe says they have flash ready and they're waiting on Apple to approve it it may not be in a state where it's usable by us. If you have an iPhone 3G, and you say you do, you know you notice how prone Safari is to crash on websites that have a lot of JavaScript and a lot of user side stuff, a lot of forms. You know, if you go to Gmail just on the browser itself, it's real slow. So the iPhone is very touchy about memory, and a lot of other phones are well are as well. So when you introduce something like flash especially on mac os 10 adobe better had fixed a lot of bugs because i have flash 10 on mac os 10 they fixed some bugs but they haven't fixed it all and, and recall that the iphone 3g does run mac os 10 so we have to consider you know some of the libraries and some of the underlying technologies when we talk about that so you know all in all i don't believe i don't personally believe that flash is ready yet i think they need more time i think they need to overhaul it completely while Adobe says it's ready, you know, Adobe just wants to push their technology. So they're they're obviously motivated by other factors. You know, they may not have the user interest completely in mind. So while they're kind of dissing Flash Lite at the same time, they're saying, hey, we have Flash ready in its full state. Um, I don't think we're I don't think we're gonna benefit from that decision. That's just my opinion. But uh, thanks for the question, John Mackin. Okay, hey man, I like your video. This is from Pinpon76. 
So that was one if you could help me. I have an iPhone first gen and I was able to unlock the phone, but I have no carrier and the firmware that I have, Pony just telling me is the wrong one. What can I do? I have a T-Mobile wing and can't stand it. Okay, so what it sounds like is you have, well, let me repeat this, you you, un, you you were able to unlock the phone, but from what I'm hearing, you're putting in your SIM card and it's saying no carrier. And the firmware that I have, Ponage is telling me that it's the wrong one. So that's kind of a contradictory statement. I don't know. From what it sounds like, your unlock didn't work. Um, so what I would recommend is attempting to unlock it again. Uh, run Ponage tool and uh, you might have to downgrade your firmware, which is getting a little messy. Um, I don't know if I can, I haven't been down this road before, but from the looks of it, it looks like you had a failed unlock. Unlocking is very touchy. That's why I don't deal with it that often. It looks like you had a failed unlock. If you got no carrier and Ponish Tool doesn't know what to do. Um, so your options are very, very limited. So be very careful. I can't really help you in terms of how to downgrade your firmware or to get it right back uh, up to speed. Sorry. Um, that's a hard one. <laughs> All right. Next question. Lennon Honor Film says, what kind of camera microphone do you use? When you do your videos, very nice stuff. Thanks, uh, Lennon. That's that's a great compliment. Uh, I'm using a Canon PowerShot TX1. This is a, a 720p small camera that can uh, that takes um, SD cards. I have an 8 gigabyte SD card in there, and I can get up to 30 minutes of 720p video with it. So that's what I use, and I use the built-in microphone. So. Um, Generally, my lighting is decent right now. It's not the best. If I had good lighting, the video quality would be even better. So that's the camera I use. You can get it from. You can get this camera now, probably for around 200 bucks. It's not that expensive compared to other high definition cameras. So, wow, I've only gone through five, and I've been like 15 minutes. Wow. <laughs> Let's see. Um, Not sure if that's appropriate for this one. Nope. All right. Evans Life says, Hi, I've been subscribed to your videos for a while now. I really enjoy watching your iPhone mm -hmm. videos. I have an iPod Touch, so the videos are very useful. I would like to just tell you you're doing a great job on that. But also, if you can make a video or send me a message back telling me how to change the slider, basically bling my iPod out. Just some tips like that would be great. All right, Even. That's, that one's not that hard. Um, I happen to have an iPhone in my pocket and I'm going to quickly see if I can show you how to how to change the slider. So Insidia, uh, to do this you need to first jailbreak your phone, but Insidia, um, I'm just going to wait for it to come up, Insidia you have to go to the theme section and um, you have to install custom sliders for there, but they're going to require an application called Winterboard. Winterboard allows you to customize a lot of the graphical aspects of your iPhone. So once you bring up Cydia, this is Cydia here, go to sections, sections at the bottom, and then that's going to bring up the sections. Now scroll down to, I'm going to scroll down to multi, no, 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 no. Uh, I think it's under themes and system. I'm going to try that out. Yeah. Under themes, they got them in parentheses. You got you're gonna tap on themes system, which is that one. From there, you'll see a list of custom sliders. There's Apple sliders, there's Arsenal sliders, AT&T signal bars, all kinds of stuff. But let me just give you a screenshot of the Apple sliders. Um, I'm on the details page now. Let's see screenshots and there we go okay so this is what that one looks like that's that's an apple oh, I've got glare going on here see the apple slider there it's like 
picture within picture and all kinds of reflection nonsense going on. But you see a little apple down there. That's how you change sliders. So to bling out your phone, you basically need to install Winterboard and then from there install a bunch of custom themes. Thanks for uh, subscribing. All right, the next one comes from Brian2. He says, I was wondering how the NVIDIA 8800GS with 512 megabytes of graphic, 512 megabyte, 512 megabytes graphics card of the iMac compares to the 9400M plus 9600M GT with 512 megabytes of the new MacBook Pro. Also, does 250 megabytes to 512 megabytes really make a big difference in reality? That's a good question. I haven't seen a lot of specs on the 8800GS, the one that's in the iMac. Um, but I can, it's my guess, and this is my guess just based on the platforms and the technology, that the 9400 and the 9600 MGT with 512 is going to be more powerful. Here's why. Well, right now, Apple is allowing you to seamlessly switch between the two. Um, but I believe I read in an article that you can actually, you know, utilize both in, uh, run them both at the same time so that the power capability is there I believe it just requires an update validate that for me I believe I, I, I may be misremembering but the 9600 MGT with 512 is you know I think it's going to be a more powerful card since it's a, a newer chipset and it's a better I think it's a better architecture as well um, does a 256 megabyte difference make a make a, a, a really big difference in reality well you have to define reality. If your reality is in graphic intensive applications, yeah, it's gonna make a difference. If your reality is web surfing and listening to music and using iPhoto, then no, it's not gonna make a huge difference. So if you play games, if you use graphic intensive programs, um, or if you wanna take advantage of some of the advanced features of Flash and multimedia stuff, even iDVD may require some of that extra video memory. Yeah, you may want to go for the 512 if you can afford it and it's not too far of your price range I would even I, I would go for the 512 that would probably be the best bet and uh, I'm taking too long for each one of these <laughs> The next one is from real flight G 35 This is about the YouTube video download. I tried and got to the website when I clicked the link nothing happened Do you know how to fix it or if there's a better website to use? I believe this is regarding the, the download YouTube videos as MPEG-4. Um, as far as I know, the uh, the link works. Now, if you if you add a bookmark to your your uh, bookmark bar and you go to a YouTube video and you click it and nothing happens, probably means that there is no MPEG-4 version of that video available. Every video on YouTube doesn't have that available. Um, I believe they're trying to expand that out. I don't know if they're converting everybody, but I have noticed that using that bookmarklet, it doesn't work everywhere. So try some of my videos. All of my videos are in H.264, so you're going to have MPEG-4 versions. So if you try it on my site and on my channel and it doesn't work, then you may be using the wrong browser. So try using Internet Explorer or Firefox and the like, and it should work. I haven't had much problem with it. Next one is from XX Chris16. Alright, time is running out. This is probably the last one. 1687XX. I was wondering if it's possible to get the background images behind the application like you had on your previous iPhone. Sure. In Winterboard, you need to enable an option called user um, user wallpaper. And I'm gonna pop open Winterboard real quick on my phone. Uh, time is running out and let's see if I can find it here yeah when you open winterboard you can have a bunch of options and the one that you want is right there see it says user, user wallpaper with a check next to it you check that guy and when you go to your home screen your home screen will have a background let me tilt a little bit your home screen will have a background that is your background image so if I lock my phone here and I bring it back up you see that's my background that's the time machine background and I'm doing it backwards and that's the same background for that so that's just the option in winterboard winterboard allows you to trick out your phone all right folks that's all the time I have this one's went a little long but uh, I got about eight questions eight or nine questions in this is boy TV Q&A for October 24th 2008 and I hope I answered your questions and uh, stay subscribed to the channel, and I'll try to answer as many of these as I can. I get a lot of questions. You guys just don't know. All right, folks, take care, and bye-bye.